RobinReaction.com. In this video, I'm going to go over how to write molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations. This type of problem involves kind of combining a bunch of concepts that you learn early on in chemistry, and you have to use all of them to get the answer. And for that reason, it can be a little bit tricky at first. So let's just take it step by step. And the first step that we have to be able to do is we have to be able to break these two molecules up into their individual ions. So we know for all these problems, we're going to be doing them in water, which means we're going to dump both these things in water and they're going to dissolve. And when they dissolve, they're going to break up all the ionic bonds that are here now are going to break up and these two things are going to be in their separate ions. So the two skills you need to be able to break things up into their separate ions are one, knowledge of the common ion list, which just is either given to you or you've memorized it by now. And this is just things that are commonly together and you need to know what their charge is. And the other thing you have to know is how valence electrons work and how they control the charges that these elements are going to have once they become ions. So let's go ahead and start with our first molecule. And the very first thing you should recognize is your common ion of NO3. So this is nitrate. And again, by memorization, or we're looking it up, you just have to know that it forms NO3 minus. And the other part of this molecule is Ag or silver. So in this case, we aren't using our knowledge of valence electrons, we're using our knowledge of transition metals and that because NO3 is minus one and this molecule has no charge, the Ag must be plus one because it's going to add up to a charge of zero. And now let's do our second molecule. So we have potassium K. Potassium is in our first column in the periodic table, which means it has one valence electron, which means it wants to lose one valence electron, which means that when it's an ion, it becomes one plus. And we also have phosphate, which is a common ion, which becomes PO4 three minus. All right, so that's our reactants. And now we're ready to go ahead and start predicting our products. So you can see I've color coded it. And so our inside goes with our inside and our outside goes with our outside. That's the way to memorize it. The reason behind that is just because we have to pair things that are positive with things that are negative. That's what's attracted to each other. We can't have our silver and our potassium together because they're both positive. We can't have our nitrate and our phosphate together because they're both negative. So that only leaves us with one swap. And so now to predict the products, we're going to have to go ahead and use our solubility rules. So now going ahead and swapping, we're going to have K, NO3. We have a charge of plus one and negative one, so we only need one of each to completely balance out our charges. And that's going to be added to Ag3, PO4. We need three silvers so that our charge is a total of three plus, and then our one phosphate is three minus. So now that we have our two products, let's go ahead and do solubility rules to kind of see what we have to do for our other types of equations. So remember, we're starting this problem by dumping silver nitrate and potassium phosphate into water. And let's just go ahead and check the solubility of those two compounds. So using our grid at the top, we see that nitrate is soluble and that there are no exceptions. Everything that bonds to nitrate is soluble in water. So that means that this first molecule is soluble, which means we would draw that as AQ. It's aqueous in solution. And now looking at potassium phosphate, we find potassium that's soluble, exceptions none. So anything with potassium is soluble. So that means that this is also soluble and that we'd also describe it as aqueous. And this is great because this allows our reaction to actually happen, right? If these two things didn't dissolve in water, we couldn't react them in water. So now we can go ahead and do KNO3, potassium nitrate. And once again, both potassium and nitrate are soluble and there are no exceptions. So this is definitely going to be soluble and we're going to say it's aqueous. And then lastly, we have silver phosphate. So phosphate is over here. It is insoluble, but it has some exceptions. Let's check the exceptions out. Well, the exceptions don't include silver. So that means that our compound here is still insoluble which means we describe it as a little S inside parentheses for solid. It creates a precipitate. It's going to look like dust 
or solid or something in your reaction. It's not just going to look like a clear liquid anymore. And now that we have this, this unlocks us to be able to fill out our total ionic equation because now we know we're going to have this. Ag3PO4 is just going to be there. That's no longer going to be ionic. It's no longer going to have charges. And we know that our potassium nitrate, our KNO3, completely dissolves. So that's still going to be. All right, so now we have all of our components in our total ionic equation. Let's just go ahead and make it look like an equation. So we still have to add our plus signs. It's still a reaction. And now we want to go ahead and add either aqueous or solid. We've already added our one solid. The rest are just all aqueous. And now I want to go ahead and balance. And so we're going to have to balance both of these equations. So starting with molecular, I'm going to have to have a three right here because I have three silvers on the right hand side. That makes me have three nitrates, which means I'm going to have to add a three right here. And now I'm actually balanced out. So now balancing the total ionic equation, and it's going to be a little bit different because I'm completely dissolved. So on my left hand side, my silvers are going to turn into three different silvers, and I'm also going to have three different nitrates. And so because these things have now separated, I have to continue to balance them. And that's the same thing for my potassium. I had this three right here. Now I'm going to have to have three potassiums because each one is going to separate. So this is how we balance now. I'm still just going to have my one phosphate. I can leave that alone. I'm still just going to have my one silver phosphate that can stay the same. But on the right hand side, I'm still going to need three potassiums and three nitrates. So this is my total ionic equation. And from it, I can go ahead and get my net ionic equation. So I can go ahead and cancel out all of my spectator ions. And what spectator ions mean is things that just aren't doing anything. So if it's just the exact same on both sides, that means it doesn't do anything. So when I look around, I immediately see I have three K1 plus on both sides. That means it doesn't do any reaction. It's just the same as it was in the beginning and the end. So I can cancel them out. I also have the same three NO3s on both sides. So I can just go ahead and cancel those out. And I can see what lef what's left over, what actually changes, what's not the same on both sides, is my solid, right? That makes sense. And the things that ended up making my solid. So now to rewrite for clarity, my net ionic equation looks like this. My total ionic equation looks like this, and my molecular equation looks like this. All right, hope this video helped you with molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations, and happy studying. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And if you go to my website, I have a ton of free practice problems you can check out. And if you need even more help, you can hire me for one-on-one -on -one private tutoring sessions that are online. All right, thanks, that's it. Happy studying.